Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing of the Sony Cybershot DSC HX200V. Now this is a mega zoom camera that is part of the Cybershot family, so it is a point and shoot camera, but is often referred to as a bridge camera because it is somewhere in between a traditional point and shoot and a digital SLR. Not only in terms of its form factor, but also specifications and focal range. So originally this was a $500 camera when it launched last year. You can now pick it up for roughly $300 or less which is why I'm sharing it with you guys because I think it is a great value at that price point. Overall, if you take a look at it right now, you'll see that reviews have been generally favorable and that's because this is a replacement to a very solid camera, the HX100V, um, or 100, excuse me, which was also uh, preceded by the HX1. And Sony has built on that and this camera may be the best uh, thus far in terms of mega zooms that you can find, especially at a palatable price. Now this has been replaced. The HX300 is coming out. They've removed the GPS, which is on board in this model. So maybe cost cutting, maybe it's just an acknowledgement that that feature isn't for absolutely everybody. But either way, the big improvement is 20 more optical zoom. So we're moving from a 30X Zeiss lens here to a 50X lens in the 300. Uh, but a very big difference in price right now because that camera when it ships in two months is priced at $499.99. The same price point that the camera you're looking at right here originated at back in 2012. So let's go over specifications and I'll get this thing out of the box and eventually of course give you guys a full review of this. We're working with an 18.2 megapixel sensor and even though it's a small sensor, um, you know, still high expectations for what it's going to be able to do when paired with this glass. And that's because you are getting a 30x piece of glass, again Zeiss, and uh, very good aperture range considering uh, the focal range that you're getting out of this lens. Uh, the LCD on the back, pretty much the standard 3 inch uh, 921,000 uh, pixel display that Sony uses on all of their point and shoot cameras. I shouldn't say all, but most. Uh, but it does articulate. And then another great feature of this camera is its HD movie mode. As with many of Sony's point and shoot cameras, especially the HX20V, 30V, I could go back to the 9V. Those of you who follow my channel know uh, my affection for what Sony's done with the point and shoot segment because they've really redefined low light capabilities, but more importantly, also video capabilities. So that's something this camera is going to be able to really leverage, especially with that gigantic focal range and uh, a whole bevy of different options uh, and features that it has. So really high video quality, really strong in the still department. Of course, the super zoom is what, or mega zoom is what it's really all about. Uh, you've got some accessories that Sony still makes. Uh, there is an updated version of that case for the HX300, even though the form factor is pretty much identical. It's really just about achieving a camera that, as I mentioned before, is a bridge. And that's what the 200V and the 300 will also represent, as uh, past models have. Uh, you guys can see pretty much just giving you a little bit more of the uh, packaging here. And, uh, of course, some Apple uh, logo there because they are letting those of you who want to make sure know that this is compatible with your Apple-based computer. And I say that because... So many users, especially people who follow my channel, come back to me saying this Sony camera is not working with my Mac. And Sony has realized that and rectified it in the last year, uh, at least clearly. So with that said, let me go ahead and get this uh, open. And we'll get down to, approach this from a different angle, and get down to what the camera actually looks like. At $500, it's tough for me to recommend bridge cameras because after all I am very fond of the NEX lineup and at that price point you really can get an NEX camera especially now with the uh, 3N launching Let's see if I can get this open even though I broke the seal it's still uh, not cooperating fully but what it comes down to is what you're really looking to get out of a camera and my best example is that if you're like me and you want to be able to you know take some shots that require a much longer lens than what you would be willing to carry, then that's where this is a really great value. Uh, for, you know, a parent, someone, uh, a grandparent, anyone looking to get an all-in-one experience where they feel like they are not going to be sacrificing anything, no compromise, that's what bridge cameras really represent. Or people who don't want to take on the complexity of digital SLRs. Uh, or any interchangeable uh, lens camera system. So warranty, the traditional paperwork we expect to see, unfortunately, a little bit too much of it in my opinion. 
but Sony does have Play Memories now. This camera does not have Wi-Fi, unfortunately, but that 18.2 megapixel sensor that I mentioned before was a revamp from the one found in the HX100, so that certainly should be a good thing. From what I've seen, it is a good thing. Uh, it performs just about up to snuff. Haven't really seen anyone feel that. I mean, of course, there are some that feel it's uh, below its uh, performance, the last generation, but uh, we'll see how it performs in my tests. Uh, same series battery, so that's a good thing. These are relatively affordable. They've been on the market for a while. Uh, I believe it has been changed uh, for the new version of this camera, so that may be a drawback. If I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. Uh, I don't think the 300 uses that. Your power, or at least half of the AC adapter to charge the device, uh, plenty of length on this. Your strap, you know, traditional Sony black strap, We've also got the balance of the, uh, well, this is your USB cable, but I was going to say we've got the balance of the actual power brick here, which again is the Sony standard. And if you own any Sony camcorder, then this is gonna look familiar. And that's what's really unique about this camera is that even though it is an actual still camera, a mega zoom, much of the accessories that are coming out of this box are the same ones that ship with Sony Handycams. So that pretty much speaks to the fact that this, for many of you, as long as you're not uh, put off by the 29-minute clip uh, limitations for video, this really could be a video camera. Although, do keep in mind, as we take a look at that lens cap, you are going to, uh, when you shoot any video with this camera, you will hear the zoom in your recordings because after all this is a still camera first video camera second so lens cap it's not integrated into the actual body something some mega zooms have others do not and then lastly the camera itself so let's see if I can get it out of here safely and again for my personal purposes this is really just all about having reach something that you know with an NEX camera would require a gigantic lens, uh, I'm not even going to get into cost because that's obviously not what we're talking about, but just actual weight. And here you can see it, uh, very similar to what we see from Sony's Alpha lineup of digital SLRs in terms of actual styling. I think that's what this looks most like. Uh, I remember my first Sony digital SLR and uh, very similar obviously in terms of looks, but that Carl Zeiss lens is what makes this unique. And again, that aperture range uh, also quite nice to have in a mega zoom like this. So uh, our shutter button with your zoom toggle, you've got a uh, focus button, custom button. By the way, a lot of, I think there are like nine or 10 different uh, filters you can use that are built in in camera after all. Uh, that's a very big trend now with all point and shoots. And the HX20 and 30V that I reviewed uh, in the past for you guys, very popular point and shoot cameras. Those can fit in your pocket. Obviously, this is not going to fit in a pants pocket, a coat pocket maybe, because this is still not as big as a traditional digital SLR. Also, uh, you know, a little bit smaller than an NEX7, let's say with a Zeiss 24 millimeter, certainly a lot smaller than any NEX with an 18 to 200 millimeter E-mount lens. Uh, your microphone array right at the top, no mic input here, unfortunately. Your traditional uh, dial for different modes here to take you through pretty much getting to any mode you need quickly. Your power button, electronic viewfinder, which, uh, you know, has gotten pretty decent reviews. It's not the same OLED one you're going to find in the NEX lineup, but still solid to say the least. Your uh, autofocus and manual focus switch right there. I do not believe you can control zoom from the ring, but I'm not positive on that. HDMI output. This is a difference from last generation, last gen. Like many Sony cameras had proprietary outputs that would convert to HDMI. Now we've got a standard HDMI port. Like that they've given it doors. Always like that. Not a big fan of uh, rubber inlays or things like that. And of course your power, your DC in right there. The viewfinder, I mentioned before, it also does incorporate uh, the sense technology that Sony acquired when they purchased uh, Konica Minolta so that when you bring your eye up to the sensor, it's going to detect that and switch from on screen here to on screen in the viewfinder. That's something that is also found in all of their NEX and digital SLR alpha cameras. Now, as I mentioned before, this does articulate, which is a good thing. That's pretty much industry standard. Unfortunately, it does not come all the way around and allow you to actually do any self-portraits. But then again, this really is a bridge camera. Self-portraits, uh, 
something that's starting to take. Not every manufacturer has incorporated it, but hopefully they all will learn, as Sony has started, as have others, uh, that we, I think, all would appreciate having it. We don't all need it, but I think a lot of it, a lot of you out there would trade that for GPS or Wi-Fi. But of course, that doesn't apply to everyone. Uh, again, this model does have GPS, which I do appreciate. Um, as far as how it's going to perform, we'll see. Optical steady shot, something I want to point out because Sony's famous for it, some of the best image stabilization in the business, and it is three point, so that's critical as well. So that means both in uh, video and of course stills, you're gonna get, in my opinion, the best image stabilization available right now. So is this camera right for you? Well, it really depends. Do you want a mega zoom? I'll cover all of that in the review, but in terms of the price point right now, it's very tough to beat. And if you're comparing it to the new model, you really aren't going to find many things on the new model that are going to blow this one out of the water outside of its actual zoom. Now, clearly, it's a mega zoom. That's going to be the focus for many of you out there. But for those of you who are budget conscious or clearly just are happy with the 30x range that this offers, then I see no reason you know, not to pick this up. You've got a built-in flash right here, by the way. The grip also, construction overall feels solid, I have to say. Very much, if I had to compare it to the build of any NEX camera, very close to the NEX6 in terms of the feel. Uh, more plastic used here, but and that's to en uh, enable it to be lighter, but overall very similar in feel. Uh, also just want to mention the buttons here on the back. You've got your playback button, your movie record button, menu, very similar to what we find with uh, Sony's digital SLRs and NEX cameras. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, in the bottom we do have our battery compartment, also an SD card slot, of course it accepts uh, memory stick uh, as well. Transfer Jet logo because, well, when this was made, Sony was still marketing it. Now, not so much since that has not been a screaming success. But overall, like what this camera has to offer, uh, between the high quality stills uh, and video that you'll get out of it, the tremendous focal range and Zeiss lens, I don't see many downsides other than the fact that you have to be aware of what a camera like this is going to deliver when it comes to stills. You're not going to get digital SLR results, but you'll get really, really close as long as you're not looking to crop and pixel peep and dissect your photos. So uh, the HX200V, looking forward to giving you guys further impressions, but so far, like the build, I pretty much knew already what I was getting myself into. As I mentioned before, this is really all about what you're comfortable with, and if you want a 30X lens, then it's going to be tough to beat this, unless you go with the brand new 300, which has that 50x lens. Uh, and also, as I mentioned before, this last point I'm making on the unboxing, that clear uh, image zoom, that digital zoom that Sony offers now, does allow this to get up to 60x. Uh, while the quality isn't what you're going to get out of you know the 30 optical end of things, it's still very, very good and really puts the older versions of digital zoom that we're used to looking at to shame. And that's also sh uh, shared by the RX100 as well as many of other uh, of the other cameras in Sony's lineup, including NEX models now, the 5R, the NEX6, those all have clear image zoom and there's a reason, it works really well. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.